Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. We're on day 64, and uh, today we're sort of continuing here with this, uh, with our treatment of the genitive plural endings we learned the other day. Uh, and we know from the uh, our singular endings that sometimes uh, accusative forms look like genitive forms, and the same is also true in the uh, in the accusative plural, right? So here we have this overlap between uh, the genitive plural and the accusative plural. And then meanwhile, certain accusative plurals look like nominative plurals. So we're back to this issue of basically how do certain how do animate nouns behave versus how do inanimate nouns behave. So for the easy part, let's look at a the slogan here on this poster. Для блага советского народа построим новые электростанции. So for the good of the Soviet people, we will build, построим. Okay, what will we build? So we're waiting for a direct object. And we get one in the plural, Novoye Elektrostansi. So the singular there is Elektrostansia, it's a feminine. But more importantly for us here, it's inanimate, right? An electric station is obviously inanimate. Okay, so the first rule we can give, and it's a very useful one, but thankfully very simple. Uh, inanimate nouns in the plural, their accusative form will always look like the nominative plural. Right? So that's very easy. Okay, now let's step aside from that for a moment and look at the trickier topic, uh, namely, right, how do animate nouns behave in the accusative? Okay, so now this, this little table here is, uh, I've tried to present this as clearly as I know how. There's a lot of tricky stuff here. Uh, I mean, it's not really that difficult in a certain sense, but it, it, it gets confusing for obvious reasons. Okay, so here we have uh, two columns, right, accusative singular, which is review, and now we're looking at the accusative plural, and uh, sort of like in, in uh, book one, right, we're getting two cases for the price of one here in a sense, right? We're, we're getting in this chapter not only the, the genitive plural, but also we're able to cover now the, the accusative plural, right? Because we, all the, we have all the case forms we need. Again, the case forms are going to either look just like genitive or just like the nominative plural. Okay, so let's, let's start first with the review, accusative singular, and let's start with feminines. Now, you may remember that in, uh, in the singular, we, we said that, of course, we can classify certain nouns as feminine animate, right? If they refer to a, a, a woman, right, a human being or an animal, right, we would say that that is an animate noun. But that didn't really worry us very much back in the singular because all, all feminines acted the same in the singular. There wasn't a special ending or something for animates versus inanimates. Okay, remember this little formula in the feminine accusative singular, a becomes u, ya becomes you, right? That's really all there is to it. Okay, so for example, ruske kniga, if we say I, I bought a Russian book, we need accusative, that would be ruskoyu knigu, right? All the a's have become u's and the ya became a u. Okay, same thing with an animate example, right? Ruske studentka, a female student, obviously it's animate, but that doesn't affect the accusative singular, right? I saw a, Rus a female Russian student, that would be yavidyol, what? Accusative, ruskuyu studentku. Okay, look at the, the we here have here not only black boxes, but here a dashed box, something a little bit different. This is one people miss a lot because, again, they, they think by analogy to masculine animates, we're going to see that here in a moment, right? But they think, okay, the feminine animate accusative is going to look like the genitive uh, singular, right? And so they'll say things like, I saw a ruski studentki, right? Using the genitive. But and again, that so watch out for that example. Just remember that in the singular, uh, animates work exactly the same as inanimates. A becomes u, ya becomes you. Okay, to understand why people make that mistake, let's review the masculines. Right here, we do have to worry about this dis difference in the accusative singular, right? A masculine inanimate looks like the nominative singular in the accusative singular, right? So a Ruski film, a Russian film, let's say we watched a Russian movie, right? We need now a direct object in the accusative. So, uh, but here, no change, right? Ruski film is inanimate. The accusative looks just like the nominative uh, ruski film or something. Okay, but animates, uh, right, their accusative singulars look like the genitive singular, right? They look exactly like genitive forms. So, ruski student, if we saw a Russian student, a male student, that would be uh, ruskova studenta, looking like the genitive. 
Okay, now let's look over at the plural. Here's the new content, and we see, look at the black boxes. We see that now in the accusative plural, uh, all animates, right, feminine and masculines, all animates in the accusative plural look exactly like genitive plural. Okay, so back away from this table a little bit and look it over, and you see it's the black boxes. Those are the accusatives that look just like the genitive, and then you've got the dashed box. That's kind of the odd man out, right, where for, for, for feminine singular. Okay, so kind of a lot to keep track of here, but just again, remember that generally animates look like genitives, singular and plural. The only exception is the feminine singular. Okay, so again, uh, we bought some Russian books. We needed an accusative. That would be Ruski knigi, right? The inanimates look just like uh, the nominative plural, no change. But if we saw Russian female students, right, animate looks like genitive. We vidili ruskich studentok, right? Okay, uh, we watched Russian films. Inanimate, that would be mu smatreli ruskie filmy. Again, looks just like nominative plural, uh, but animate accusative plural. Ruski student. We saw Russian students. Мы видели русских студентов. Right, and as you can see, those are obviously genitive plural forms, just the way we learned them the other day. Okay, so again, let's revisit this little issue. It's 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 almost like a case of hypercorrection, right? People make this a little harder than it is, right? Uh, if you want to say, I love my brother, я люблю своего брата. Okay, that's correct. Brother, masculine, animate. Looks like accusative here. But if you want to say, I love my sister, that's not я люблю своей сестры. Right, again, people think, okay, sister is animate, so it's got to look like genitive. But remember, feminine singular uh, isn't concerned with animacy, right? It's just a becomes u, ya becomes you. And so the correct version of that is я люблю свою сестру. Okay, so let's do a quick exercise, uh, reviewing both singular and plural accusatives. And we're, we're just seeing these things, right? So very simple sentences, but we need direct objects. In Russian, that means we need accusatives. I see our professor, singular. Я вижу нашего профессора. Right? You may need to review your uh, genitive singular uh, endings here. Accusative plural. Я вижу наших профессоров. You may remember that professor becomes professora, right? It's one of those stressed a ah plurals, and that stress carries over to the genitive. Я вижу наших профессоров. Looks just like genitive. Okay, I see our new female friend. Accusative singular. Я вижу... Sorry, I, I see your new friend. Я вижу твою новую подругу. А becomes у, я becomes you. Okay, I see your new female friend's plural. Okay, this is going to look just like genitive. Я вижу твоих новых подруг. Okay, number three, uh, I see a famous writer. Я вижу известного писателя. Right, uh, again, uh, masculine animate, looks like genitive in the accusative singular and in the accusative plural. So I see famous writers. Я вижу известных писателей. Right, there's the yay ending. Uh, number four, I see a small dog. Okay, a, a puppy, sorry, a small puppy. Okay, this is animate. Remember, animacy applies to animals as well, and even insects and things like that. Я вижу маленького щенка. Маленького щенка. Looks like genitive. Uh, and in the accusative plural, looks like genitive plural. Я вижу маленьких щенков. I see little puppies. Пять, I see a huge dog. Okay, also animate, feminine. So in this singular, it's going to do its own thing, right? A becomes U, Ya becomes you. Я вижу огромную собаку. And accusative plural will look like genitive plural. Я вижу огромных собак. Here's a nice uh, saying. Работа дураков любит. Work loves idiots. Okay, uh, so let's look, uh, speaking of animacy, let's talk a bit about animals and just learn some vocab, some basic animals and whatnot. And we see a, an interesting um, example of anti-Americanske propaganda, right? Anti-American propaganda. Uh, you see this vulture, right? And he says, Ya Golub, I am a dove. But he's not fooling anyone, right? We can see that he's a vulture. And uh, so there you go, right? Ya Golub. Right? We could add that, in fact, 
in reality, this thing is a vulture. Okay, so let's read through the, just some nouns here. Kot, koshka, sabaka, koin, soft masculine, loshids, which, by the way, again, we can see here uh, that that's a feminine e noun because we're given the genitive ending. Karova, ptitsa, golub. We can see there that's a um, soft masculine because, again, we, we see the ya ending. Lev, lva. There's a kind of tricky mobile vowel spelling. Tigr, yosh, kit, kita. Again, look at these mock dictionary entries, right? That kita is showing us that this is a an in-stressed masculine. So, for example, the uh, think, ask yourself, what would be the nominative plural whales? That would be kiti, kiti. Genitive plural would be kitof, uh, and so forth. Okay, reba, reba is a fish. Zmiya, krolik, or zayats. A zayat is sort of more like a hare, like an English rabbit versus hare. Not really that big of a difference for most people, I assume. Svinya is a pig. Avtsa, sheep. Kazyol, kazla. Okay, that's showing us that we have a mobile vowel, right? Kazyol, kazla. And then kaza would be a, 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 what is it called? A nanny goat or whatever. By the way, kazyol is a common form of, of abuse, right? If you have some nasty man or whatever, you can call him a goat. Um, I saw someone get uh, pretty viciously beaten for calling someone a kazyol once. Uh, uh, I don't know if I've told that story before. I think maybe I did in an earlier video. Okay, juk, uh, juka, again in stressed, pauk, pauka, mucha, trakan, mish, kresa, medvedz, papugai, kura, pituch. And again, look over these entries. Uh, where I've given the genitive ending, it's it's telling us something, right? Either about stress, like juk, pauk, and pituch are all instressed masculine nouns. Muish is a feminine e noun. Midvieds is a uh, soft masculine, right? And again, we wouldn't be able to know those things just by looking at the nominative singular. Okay, here are some plants, just a few words. Remember, plants are not animate, right? And so, djereva. Uh, Plural, by the way, derevia, an irregular plural. Trava, tsvitok, tsviti, that's an irregular plural. Kust, kusta, right, in stress. By the way, there's a typo in the book there. That is a just a bush, uh, just any bush. Uh, so I'll have to correct that. Uh, if, if your copy of the book reads lilac, that's a different word, sireng, which I guess we don't really need to know. It's an e noun. Okay, uh, so birch tree is a uh, birrioza, birrioza. A, a birch tree, of which there are quite a lot in uh, in Russia, at least the European part that I'm familiar with, the European part of Russia. Okay, uh, by the way, the word for animal is a standalone neuter adjective, životnaya, životnaya. A pet is a house animal, literally, or a domestic animal, or however you want to translate, damashnyi. Damashnyi is životnaya, and the word for plant is rastienya. Okay, so let's just make a few of these accusative uh, and either singular or plural just to practice. And again, keep in mind that if it's an animal, it's going to be animate, just like the forms we just uh, reviewed. So let's do plurals first. I love cats. Yelublu, koshik, cows would be karov, ptitsa, birds, ptits, trees, yelublu, derevia, that's the weird neuter form, tsvitli, Right, irregular plural, inanimate, of course, and kitof. Right, again, that's back to animate. So it looks like the genitive. Okay, I saw, I spotted, I caught sight of these things a spider, a fly, and whatever. Uh, and let's do the singular here. I saw a spider. Yo video pauka, muhu, right, feminine. Tarakana, krisu, here's another feminine. Biryozu, right, I saw a birch tree. I saw a bear, yauvidyal midvedya, midvedya, soft masculine. Again, it looks like the genitive in the accusative. Yakupil, okay, I bought these things. Loshids, right? That's an e noun. So there, by the way, that's a good example, right? Uh, it's a feminine e noun, so it's feminine. But remember, there's no a or ya here to change to u or u, so it simply remains the same. Yakupil loshids. 
And you might circle that. That's the type of example people miss a lot. They say things like lo shidu or lo shidu, right? Should be simply lo shids. Kanya, right? That's masculine. Kanya, papugaya, also masculine. Uh, Svitok, I bought a flower. That's inanimate. Svitok. Zmiyu, I bought a snake. And uh, sabaku, right? I bought a dog. Uh, feminine. I hate, okay, now let's give plurals. Yaninavizhu much. Looks like genitive, animate. I hate beetles. Yaninavizhu uh, zhukov. I hate mice. Yaninavizhu mishay. Mishay. Again, those are all animate, so they all look like genitives in the accusative. Okay, at the bottom of page 65 in the book, there's a quick note here. This is something that we'll talk a lot about later, when we, especially when we start reading literature. It basically, uh, it, essentially, in, historically in Russian, if you had a negated verb that was followed by a direct object, that direct object would pretty much always appear in the genitive, right? Again, the, the form would look just like genitive case after a negated verb or any any ver- number of other negative expressions. And so this is something to watch for, especially, again, if you're reading kind of formal Russian. It's not that you'll never hear this in spoken Russian. You do. But it used to be a much stronger tendency, and it used to be taught basically as a rule of grammar. Um, and so, again, if you teach, if you, if you read older literature, you'll see this almost never violated, right? And uh, so, again... Look at these examples. Now, here we have kind of a, ri- a variety of, again, negative expressions. First of all, ni, meaning not a single whatever, ni kapli, not a drop. And we see ka- kaplia, a drop, appearing in the genitive. Now, the next one is maybe the best example. I never do this. Ya etava ni ni djelio. There's just a straight up uh, negated verb. Ya ni djelio. I don't do this. Right? So, this, we would expect eta because we need accusative, but because of the negated verb, we could see etava, etava, right, genitive. And finally, nyanada vainli, this means something like we don't need war, we don't want war, right, but say no to war. At any rate, in the Russian, we have a, negate, a, a negative phrase, nyanada, and that's paired here with the genitive vainli. Okay, uh, next page. Okay, let's look quickly at another uh, use of the genitive uh, after the word after verbs like zhlaj and zhdai, it's meaning to wish and to await, and other such verbs. The issue here is something I call the the cheeseburger problem, right? If we're asking for something just kind of every day, like a cheeseburger, then what case would we use? We well, we would say something like I will, I want a cheeseburger. I would like a cheeseburger, and cheeseburger would be in the accusative, of course, as we as we would expect. But if we're asking for something or we're, we're wanting something, we're waiting for something a bit loftier, a bit more figurative or idealistic or whatever, then the direct object in expressions like that would, would often be in the genitive. Right? So a couple of simple examples. Mujilaya mira. We want peace. Right? So it's, it's, it's not some concrete object or food item or something. Right? It's this more abstract and sort of lofty desire. Uh, another line, mujjomperimien, you often hear that kind of thing in political protests and whatnot. It's actually, uh, it alludes to a song by Victor Soy, by the way. We, we, we await changes. We, we're expecting changes or something. Uh, so basically, uh, th- this kind of thing doesn't come up constantly, as you might imagine, uh, except for a few very common expressions you've probably heard already that uh, for reasons you may not have understood involved the genitive. I think we've actually talked about this before briefly, but now let's revisit it. Uh, So the idea is we're wishing people things, right? And again, these things are fairly abstract in the sense they're not just objects or something. We wish people a good appetite, uh, a good voyage, a nice weekend, good night, a a nice vacation, and so forth. The construction for that is... uh, the construction involves the verb jalat, right, to wish, to desire, and again, it would normally be followed by the genitive, a genitive direct object. So the full expression for something like that would be, I wish you a good appetite, a pleasant appetite. Ya zhilayo vam priyatnova apetita. But Russians don't normally say the ya zhilayo, it's just left understood. 
And so what we end up with is a simple phrase in, that appears in the genitive. Right, so here are a few common examples. Priyatnava pitita, shislivava puiti, haroshich lichadnich, spakoini noichi, haroshiva oddicha. Or just uh, if you're wishing people something like in a toast or whatever, you would often get this kind of thing. You would wish them zdarovia, shastya, etc. So again, all these uh, words here are showing up in the genitive, even though we don't um, often spell out the entire formula, yajulayo vam, it's sort of understood. And that explains the use of the genitive in phrases like this. Okay, um, moving along, uh, let's revisit some of these common irregular nouns we talked about already, right? Most of these involve people and family members. And we mentioned how, uh, you know, any irregularities we see in the nominative plural that we've been over already, we would normally expect those to carry over very consistently into the remaining plural case forms. And so here's our, a, a quick look at that, right? Uh, drusia becomes drusie in the genitive plural. And then, by the way, also in the accusative, right? These are all animates. So all of these uh, accusative plurals are going to look like the genitive plurals. By the way, with friend, note that there's no soft sign in drusier, right? The soft sign drops out, so just know that that's not a typo, uh, but that, that's a spelling mistake people make very often, uh, because obviously, you see, you do have the soft sign in drusia. Okay, but other, uh, also similarly in synavia, right, signs, you get synavia in the genitive plural, no soft sign there. Siostri becomes sistior, right, there's a unpredictable, you know, an unpredictable latent hua popping up there, mobile vowel. Dochiri, dochirie, dieti, dietie, chazyaev, chazyaev, zero ending, right, not necessarily predictable. Bratia, bratiev, there we do keep the sob sign, by the way, so again, some things here are a little bit uh, irregular. Sasiedi remains sob, sasiedi, machiri, machirie, and ludi, ludie. Okay, so again, we just have to learn these forms, essentially. Uh, you know, we see that they're all taking uh, some genitive plural endings that we've learned, but these forms themselves are a little bit uh, uh, irregular. Okay, so let's practice a few of these. Uh, now, these, these forms will be either genitive or accusative, right? And again, and again, the forms will be identical because all these nouns are animate. I have a lot of friends in Russia. Unfortunately, I rarely see my friends. Okay, this will be accusative, actually, but the form will be the same. Number two, I have, he has six neighbors in accordance with room, so to speak, right? Meaning he has, he has uh, six roommates. Unfortunately, sorry, fortunately, he likes, he loves his neighbors. Okay, that'll be accusative plural. Okay, people, at the party there were so many unknown to me people, right? There were so many people I didn't know. Um, do you know, did you know all of these people? Okay, so first example, Mnoga, that's going to be genitive plural. Now, second example, did you know all these people? That's going to be accusative, but again, the form looks the same. Landlords, uh, hosts, uh, can mean anything. I mean, it means people who, who own the house or whatever, the establishment. When I lived in Moscow, I, I literally lived in a Russian family. We'd say I lived with a Russian family in English. My uh, host, here we can say host parents in this case. Okay, there we're getting accusative plural. Looks like genitive plural. Chazyayev. Uh, my brothers live in New York. I often visit my brothers, right? Meaning I, 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 I visit. I, I visit. And then where do you visit? At my brothers. Uh, by the way, the gastiach, we'll talk about this at some point. It, 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 you don't necessarily need that here. It's just kind of a way to make very clear that you're visiting someone. So you can talk about, uh, you know, yaiduv goisti k svayim bratyum, for example, I'm, I'm on my way to visit my brothers. Or you could say yabul gastiach, 
ubratiev or whatever, meaning I visited my brothers. But remember, you know, in theory, we only need to say u or k, right? We to get across the idea of visiting someone, visiting their place. But Russians will always, often throw in v goisi and gastiach to make uh, to be a bit clearer. Anyway, my bratiev живут в Нью-Йорке. Я часто бываю в гостях у своих братьев. Я часто бываю в гостях у своих братьев. Шесть сестры. I have two sisters. I rarely see my sisters. Okay, that'll be accusative plural, but it'll look like genitive. But we often talk on the telephone. У меня есть две сестры. Я редко вижу своих сестер, но мы часто говорим по телефону. Okay, uh... So let's look quickly at a summary of all accusative endings. So this is just a bit of review, very useful review. Uh, among all of these things, I think the most common mistake may be the first, uh, uh, well, the, the, the feminine forms, right? So let's review that very carefully. We know that the rule for feminine accusative singular is A becomes U, Ya becomes U. Это новая книга, я купил новую книгу. Это последняя статья, я купил последнюю статью. Right, I bought the, the most recent article. At the Nove Titrides, ya kupil novu titrides. Okay, look at there, look there, the, the noun titrides doesn't have an ara ya, so it doesn't change, but the adjective modifying it certainly does to show that it's feminine accusative. Now, masculine animates, they look like the genitive in all accusatives, right? Singular and plural. At the Nove Student, ya viju novu studienta, right? It looks like genitive. At the novi studenti, now in the plural, ya vizu novich studentov. Again, looks like genitive. Now remember, here's a little exception, right? Feminine animates take genitive endings in the plural only, right? Remember, if it's feminine singular, it doesn't matter about whether it's animate or inanimate, it's going to be ada u yada you. But uh, animates in the plural, they too look like the genitive, uh, the genitive forms. So, at the novi studentki, Я вижу новых студенток, right? I see new female students. That form is accusative plural. It looks like genitive plural. Okay, same is true for names, right? Names, of course, refer to animate uh, people, right? So, at the Tatian Tolstai, there's a, a woman's name. In the accusative, it's going to follow the same old rule. Ты читал Татьяну Толстую? Now, masculine names in the singular are going to look like uh, genitive in the accusative, right? At the Mikhail Bulgakov... Did you tell Mikhail Bulgakov? Right? Did you read? Have you read Mikhail Bulgakov? Uh, if you haven't, by the way, you you simply must uh, check out his book, The Master and Margarita. If you haven't heard of it, Master and Margarita. It's a wonderful novel. I'm, I'm not sure I've met anyone who didn't like that book. It's just one of those books. It's I think it's pretty hard to dislike it. Anyway, um, at the Pratia Strugatsky. Okay, so here's a maybe a bit more unusual, right, a plural name, right, the brothers Strugatsky, uh, they were uh, well-known science fiction writers. So have you read the, the, the Strugatsky brothers? The Chital Brachev Strugatsky. Okay, so again, let's think that's uh, plural, right, it doesn't really even matter if it's uh, masculine or feminine, it happens to be masculine, but uh, in all, for all animate plurals, the, geni the accusative looks like the genitive. Okay, here's a poster, uh, for example, a kind of violent one. Is Karinim Spionov and Diversantov Tratskiska Bukharinskih Agent of Fascisma? I always have trouble saying Tratskiski. Uh, I can almost never say it correctly on the first try. Is Karinim Spionov and Diversantov? We will eradicate, okay, spies, diversionists, etc. We're talking about people. Uh, um, so, again, these accusatives look like, look like genitives. Spionov, Diversantov, Trotskyska, Bukharinskich Agentov, right, the Trotsky, Trotskyite, Bukharinite agents of fascism, fascisma. Okay, let's fill in a few blanks here, uh, reviewing accusatives. Okay, so, uh, at a novi film, masculine and animate, we're watching a new film. We small a novi film. We have a new film, uh, so sorry, we have new films. Let's now put it into the nominative plural. We bought new films. We copili novia filmly, right? Inanimate looks like, accusative looks like nominative. 
Number two, at the Ruske Gazeta, okay, feminine, inanimate. He was reading a Russian newspaper. On chital Rusku Gazetu. Here we have, or here there are Russian newspapers, plural. Zis yest Ruske Gazeta. We are reading Russian newspapers. Gazetu plural looks like nominative. We chital Ruske Gazeta. Three, sivonya leksia. Today there's a lecture. Ti idiosna leksiu. Right? Feminine, accusative, singular. These lectures are boring, plural. Eti leksi skushne. Do you go to the lectures? Ti chodzisz na Okay, again, inanimate, accusative, plural, looks like nominative, plural. Chitiri, eti vo That's his opinion. Did you hear his opinion? Ti slyšli vo Okay, neuter looks like um, uh, nominative. Everyone has their opinions, right? U всех свои мнения, right? Мнения, uh, nominative plural. Now that accusative plural for the for the, for the neuter is going to look like the nominative as well. Я слушаю все мнения. Пять. Какое красивое кольцо. What a pretty ring. She wears a pretty ring. Она носит красивое кольцо. What beautiful rings, plural, neuter plural. Какие красивые кольца. There's the stress shift we've talked about. They wear beautiful rings. Они носят красивые кольца. Accusative plural. All, all, all accusatives look like uh, nominatives for neuters. Шесть. Какое дорогое платье. Now a soft neuter. She bought an expensive dress. Она купила дорогое платье. What expensive dresses? Neuter plural, soft. Какие дорогие платья? Right, now there we don't get the stress shift that we almost always expect, right? So that's a bit of an exception. Uh, she is buying expensive dresses. Accusative plural looks like nominative. Она покупает дорогие платья. Сем, это огромная порция. That's a huge portion. He's, he ate such a big, such a huge portion. Он съел такую огромную порцию. What huge portions now, plural. Какие огромные порции. He loves such large portions, such huge portions. Он любит такие огромные порции. Восемь. Есть пирожок с мясом. Right, do you have a, a little bread roll stuffed with meat? Do you not want one of these things? Не хочешь пирожок с мясом? Okay, let's say they have little rolls, right, plural. У них есть пирожки с мясом. У них есть пирожки. Do you not like uh, little rolls with meat in them, right? Ты не любишь пирожки с мясом? Пирожки. Okay, that's inanimate, so accusative looks like nominative. This is my older brother. Okay, now this is animate, right? So accusative singular for the masculine here is going to look like the genitive. Знаешь моего старшего брата? Okay, now let's introduce my older brothers, plural. Это мои старшие братья. Do you know my older brothers? Okay, uh, accusative plural is going to look like the genitive plural. We have, a, we have an animate noun. Знаешь моих старших братьев? У меня есть конфета. I have a piece of candy. Okay, that's inanimate. Хочешь эту конфету? By the way, this could also be конфетку. That would be the diminutive. Uh, I have candies, let's say. All right, I have pieces of candy. У меня есть конфеты. Do you want these... This candy, of course, we'd say in English in the singular. Хочешь эти конфеты? Right? Accusative plural is going to look like nominative plural. Now, 11, we have an animate feminine. Это наша соседка. This is our female neighbor. Do you see our neighbor? Видишь нашу соседку? Now, let's make it plural. We, these are our female neighbors. Это наши соседки. Do you see our female neighbors? Animate, accusative plural is going to look like uh, genitive plural, видишь нас, наших соседок, видишь наших соседок. Okay, that does it for today. So tomorrow we're going to continue uh, reviewing the genitive and practicing practicing our endings and talk a little bit more about quantity expressions. Uh, until then, товарищи, до свидания и вперед к новым победам.